Hey everybody, welcome to Thursday. It is Nicola back with you for the coffee run after uh, being away for the last week doing all of the awesome things. Something that I really wanted to talk with you about today was around this whole follow your heart, then do the strategy. Hey Ainsley, good morning, happy Thursday. You know, it's a really big thing, I think, um, this, well, it is a big thing, you know, this whole building a business and uh, getting yourself out there and following the strategy and the plan and the tactics and everything. You know, I have tried so many things over the years uh, I've, in terms of marketing, in terms of business delivery. I've tried really high-end things that have worked brilliantly. I've tried low-end things that didn't work brilliantly. I've tried every kind of marketing trick, marketing hack, uh, I think, you know, known to man, nearly, in order to make things happen. But here's the thing that always happens. When you make decisions from a place, first of all, of working out what it is that you want, where it is that you want to be, what it is that you really want to do, the reverse engineering becomes a whole lot easier. So for example, uh, I, I think I shared with you, some of you yesterday, about my decision to run sales and marketing spy school. So what you didn't perhaps know was that I had a bit of a, it was, I guess you could almost call it a, a crisis of faith. Um, late last year, earlier this year, it was like, you know what, I know my stuff works from a, a tools perspective, from a strategy perspective, you know, that's all really great that the process works, but I'd really lost a lot of the joy in doing what it was that I was doing because I was all, I was just, I was doing it because I felt like I didn't have a way out because I felt like I had to do it because it was what I had to do. It was my skill set. It's what I've mastered and it's what the market kept telling me that they want. Now, that's awesome, but really where this crisis of faith came about, it's like, well, do I actually want what it is that I think that I want? Do I want to be doing what it is that I am? Do I even want to be doing what it is that I'm doing? And to be honest with you, I considered quitting for a long time. I considered stopping. I decided, at, like at one point, it's like, you know what? This is just... This is freaking hard, man. I'm just gonna go and renovate houses because I love getting my hands dirty. I love the the creative part of it. We've renovated our houses that we've lived in and you know, I really love that. So I had this massive crisis of faith around what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be. And it wasn't even about what the competition was doing or what the competitors are doing or what other people in my industry are doing or what the, the up and comers, the, these bright upstarts, right? You know, I wasn't, it wasn't even about them. It was this completely internal thing where I'm just like, I just don't, I just don't think it's really worth it. So I asked myself this question uh, late last year and early this year, and I've, I've asked it of myself over and over again, but it became even more important early this year. And it's like, well, if money was no issue, if, if there were no blocks to anything in your world, so no, no time constraints, no financial constraints, no energy constraints, no, what would you be doing? And I'm just like, oh my God, you know, if I was doing that, you know, I, I, I want to be speaking. I want to be speaking on stage. I want to be running events. I want to be bringing my tribe together. I want to get out there and empower you guys and show you and not even show you, just remind you, you know, hold up the mirror to say, you know, that we were pretending that was a mirror. I was role playing this, right? And it's like holding up the mirror to you and helping you to realize and see your own freaking potential because you're fucking amazing. You are brilliant. You are worthy. You are so deserving of, of this future and this thing that you want to create. You know, that's what, that's what I want to do. That's the stuff that lights me up. Hey, Cal. Yeah, Ainsley, if I, if I asked myself that, I'd be doing this too. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's like the stuff that I, that I would be letting go of, the, the menial tasks that drive me freaking crazy. That is not me operating in my zone of genius. And so I was like, you know what? 
One of the things I wanted to share with you about this event that I put on uh, this that, that happened la over the last week. So All Up is one of the cheapest multi-day events that I've run. I think the costs came in at around 16 grand. All said and told, everything, flights, accommodation, room hire, AV, the stage, the, uh, the, the paraphernalia that we had there, the food, everything was about $16,000. And when I costed it out earlier on in the year, because it was like, wow, you know, this is what I want to be doing. Let's just make it freaking happen. So then you've got the, you've got that, that goal, that dream, that desire, right? And then, it, then we've got the reality. We've got the commercial reality of whatever decisions that you are then going to make. So I, I ran out the costings. I got quotes. I worked out what I could do. It's like, you know what? I reckon, hey, Tamara, good morning. I was like, you know what? If I break even from selling tickets, am I down with that? Would I run it? It's like, yeah, fucking oath I would. It's like, you know what? If I have, if, if I'm out of pocket by say, let's say six grand, just as, a, as an example, it's like if all I can do is sell some tickets at 500 bucks each, uh, like in the early bird ticket sales, it's like, would I would I put it on? And the answer was like a, a fucking hell yeah. So it's like, all right, great, no worries. And let's just go freaking make it happen. Let's go start the marketing. Let's go make the, pay the deposits. Let's go make the bookings. Now, to me, it, that was just like, that that choice, that decision to run this event, it, it finally, uh, you know, I and then I, it was actually May that I that I got there. It like took a couple of months of toing and froing and being scared, being really freaking scared that of going and spending all this money, investing all this money, and you know what if I couldn't get anyone in the room? You know that was the, that was the the worst to me. That was the thing that I was the most afraid of. And then I made that that the reality check again. It's like you know what. At the end of the day, this is what you should be doing, Nick. So just freaking pull your finger out and just go do it and make it happen. And the people who need to be in the room will be in the room and everything else will just be okay. And, we're, you know, it's, it's like once you realize, once you choose, once you decide what that thing is that you really want. Hey, Beck, good morning. Once you make that choice and that decision, everything kind of starts to play out in your favor and that is when the strategy kicks in. Now it might feel like it is it, it, it might feel like it's not worked out the way that you want, right? It might feel like like in this instance a couple of weeks before the event I was freaking out because I didn't have the numbers registered for the event that I really wanted. That's, that's the honest, like that's really what, that's honestly what it was that I was working through. I was like, fuck, I don't have the volume of people in there that I want. We're just a little bit off breaking even, which I was fine with. I didn't do this to make money per se. Uh, it was just like, okay, right, well, that's okay. Just remember that people who would need to be in the room will be in the room and just be okay and let go of the fucking outcome, right? Now, it doesn't mean that we don't work the strategy. We still have to have a strategy because otherwise you're going to be one of those people, the love, light and clueless people, I call them, who are just going to sit there and try and manifest that everything's going to work out exactly the way we want while sitting on the couch watching television and expect that everything is going to manifest and that they're going to get that $100,000 uh, check in their letterbox or that someone's going to gift them some money or you know something magical will happen. But here's the thing. The very moment that I let go of trying to control the whole freaking thing, trying to, you know, like drive it in a way that didn't feel right, we had three more people register. You know, it's just, it's just really interesting the way that, the way that it all kind of works. So decide what it is that you would be doing if money was not a thing. You know, what are you making yourself available available for? I think I'm absolutely, it's really funny, you know, uh, staying in a luxury hotel and, and living there for a while and, and when we're in Vegas, it's, it's beautiful. It's like luxury everywhere. I'm like, you know what? I'm freaking born for this. I am worth it. I deserve it. 
you know, it's just time to be okay and to be available to all of that. For you, what is it for you? Like, what are you making yourself available for? What commitments are you making to start calling in that that future that it is that, that you want, that thing that you want to achieve, what you want? Is it a beach house? Is it a, an apartment in the city? What are you... <laughs> making yourself available for are you being honest with yourself with what it is that you freaking want because until that happens no one else can do it for you all of the external pressure all of the external motivation all of the external cajoling and bribery and uh, like backing you into a corner is never going to fucking work on a consistent basis unless you are fully aligned that you are working towards what it is that you are working towards it and it's actually what it is that you honestly freaking want and then once that happens it's like the freaking floodgates start opening back absolutely manifesting with intention freaking oath and then taking the action to make it happen so to me the process is this this is where the strategy comes in right you sit down you work out what it is that you want, how you want to feel, what that's going to mean, what it's going to look like. And then we, we, you, you imagine, you really immerse yourself. You've got to immerse yourself into the feeling of that, right? You've got to immerse yourself into the, the vibration or the frequency of you having that thing, that reality, that, that presence, that whatever it happens to be. And that's brilliant. Here's the thing that most people miss. Most people then knee jerk and go, oh, I'm going to go and create a Facebook ad or I'm going to go and do the blah. Stop. The next thing that you need to ask yourself and the only way you can do this is if you've got space is to sit down and go, what is the next best step that I can take right now in order to achieve that thing, that reality, that goal? that mindset, that feeling, whatever it might be. And you know what? It might be about going and grabbing a, fuck of, about grabbing a cup of coffee. All the swearing is happening today. It might be the next best step, might be going and lighting a candle and sitting there and doing some journaling. Maybe the next best step is reaching out to people and say, hey, you know, do you want to have a chat? The other thing that I want to remind you is that that next best step may not create that manifestation or create that goal or it might not look like it's playing out in the way that you think that it should. So Kelly's watching today. Now I had this uh, I had I had this thought going back maybe six weeks ago, Kelly, I can't remember when you were up at Port Douglas. Uh, it was maybe about six weeks ago. And I just had this thought, she was there with another, another friend of mine and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna, ping them and offer them spy school to, to come along at a at, at a at a mates rates thing because they've, they've both worked with me before and I was just like you know what it'd be amazing to have them in the room and I know that this would really help them so I, I sent them both a message and they both came back and said no right and I was like Egh. well that intuition didn't play out Nicola <laughs> That was my first, that was the reaction. I was like, oh man. And then Kelly messaged me what, like two weeks ago, I think it might've been like a week and a half or something before Spice School. It wasn't, it wasn't very far in advance. And she's like, okay, I'm ready. I'm coming. What do we need to do? And I was just like, yay. So this is what I mean, guys. A no is not always a no, all right? A no is not always a, a a no forever. It might just literally be like I just I just can't kind of work it all out right now. It might be that something better or more awesome is opening up for you. Okay, so just be so so incredibly clear on what it is that you want, what your intentions are for what it is that you want, and then what is the very next best step that I can make? What's the very next best step that I can do? Who do I need to talk to? Who do I need to reach out to? What action do I need to take? And sometimes it doesn't look the way that you think that it might, but trust that 
inner knowing. All right, that's that's the best advice that I can give you today. So that was a little ranty and a little sermony and a little preachy, but I think that you know Judah said thank you so much. I, I feel like I'm just like bang in the zone. Uh, and, and that's a culmination of everything that we've been doing over the last, well, over the last eight years in reality, but, but particularly uh, over, what are we in? We're in October. So really over the last year, actually. You know, it's okay to have a crisis of faith. It's okay to feel like things aren't working, but much like when you're building relationships, you might get heartbroken but it doesn't mean that you're never gonna find love again. My husband and I nearly divorced a few years ago. It was a freaking disaster, it was horrible, it was a nightmare. But we were able to, you know, come back, reconnect, and now we are better than what we have ever been before. So a crisis of faith is okay. Falling out of love with your business is okay. So long as you're then You've got the tools, the systems, the support in place to enable you to be able to recalibrate, reconnect, and then recommit to the future that you want to freaking create because that is what's important. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Um, <laughs> there we go. I've got to go and run a Q&A for some clients of mine. So it has been a pleasure and an honor to have you both live on here today. And for those of you who are watching the replay of this, watching the recording. Thank you for being so amazing. Uh, yes, Tamara, daylight saving, surprise. Uh, we are now going live at 9 a.m. in uh, Victoria. I didn't know what I was going to say. Victoria, New South Wales. That means that it is still 8.30 for those of you in South Australia. And it does mean that it is 8 a.m. for you Queensland folk uh, who are up and at him at like 5 a.m. because that's when the sun comes up. Do you know what's really interesting? I've been, uh, just as a little aside before we wrap this up, uh, I've wanted to move to the Gold Coast uh, with my family for, um, I don't know, that the first event that I attended on the Gold Coast was in 2012. And I, like business event, I'm just like, man, I've got to freaking move here. I've got to live here. This is just the, not service paradise necessarily, but definitely the Gold Coast, definitely in a beautiful building, <laughs> whether it's a house or an apartment, I don't know yet. But I was like, man, this is awesome. We went for, uh, you know, you guys know, I go for morning walks every morning, uh, most mornings, you know, where, depending on where I am in the world. And the thing that astonished me this week, and I know it's school holidays, but I was up and walking at about 6.30 a.m. And there were people, families with children in the water at 6.30. There were people sunbathing. There were people yogaing on the beach. There was running. There was walking. There was splodging. And it what a, what a freaking lifestyle, right? What a freaking amazing lifestyle. So... We're going to make that happen. I'm just saying. All right. Have a beautiful and amazing day. Get out there and enjoy the sun. If you have sun, go and put on a jacket. Get your umbrella. Get your thermals on. Do whatever you need to do. If you're in the cold, go out there and enjoy this, uh, this world that we live in. And then get stuck into work. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.